All right, welcome to all of the students of the Christ. Um, number one, do you guys hear me good? Is my sound coming in clear? If my sound is coming in clear, please put a thumbs up. We want to make sure that you guys hear us, okay? And uh, that's the first thing. So if you hear me, please put a thumbs up, okay? I want to make sure that the sound is good. Pastor Deborah, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, please forgive me of the lateness. Let's get straight into the word of the Lord. Uh, was your minds blown away from the other day? I say, was your minds blown away from the other day? Put up those faces if indeed your minds were blown. Heavenly Father, send forth thy truth for thy word is the truth in Yeshua's holy name. I wish to invite your attention tonight to the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18 and 19. The gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 16, verses 18 and 19. And then I need you to matriculate to the book of the Revelation or the Revelation of St. John the Divine. Revelation 2.14. And then I need you to matriculate over to Revelation 6. 16 and 12. Man, there's an anointing here tonight. Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 and 19. Revelation chapter 16, verse 12. Three things I need you to have. Number one, have the greatest weapon in history of the gospel that Christ taught, which is the mind of God. Thank you so much, Pastor Colleen. And it is imperative that uh, you follow along. If you don't have the physical mind and thought of God, then you must follow along with this electronically. So then right beside Pastor Ellis Ewing's name, right beside Pastor Sam's name, click on that link. Because if you don't pay attention, you don't follow along, you will be blocked. Okay? That's number one. Number two, make sure you have two to three pens. And number three, make sure you have a large notebook. This is anointed teaching. Thank you, Pastor Deborah Watts. Thank you so much. Let's start quickly in Matthew chapter 16. And you're going to hear some revelatory insights that you have never heard before. And it is imperative that you take notes because you're going to have to go through this lecture a few more times. Revelation chapter two, verse 14 and Revelation 16 and 12. Those are the two key verses, but let's start in Matthew chapter 16, beginning with verse 18. Hear ye the word of the Lord. The greatest teacher in history the Christ declared, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter or Petra. The Greek term for Peter is Petros, P-E-T-R-O-S. I want to make that very clear. The body of Christ was not built on Petros, P-E-T-R-O-S, or Peter, that thou art Peter or Petros, P-E-T-R-O-S, a small stone, and upon this rock, Petra, capital P, capital E, capital T, capital R, capital A, Petra is the Christ. Upon this Petra, 
or upon the Christ, I will build my body. Now, somebody said, no, it's church, Bishop. No, prior to the 325 AD conference in Nicene, Turkey, the term church was never in existence in God's word because the term church actually means the first female goddess in Greek mythology called Circe, C-I-R-C apostrophe E. So Christ did not say upon this rock, I will build my church. Christ said, upon me, Petra, the Christ, I will build my body. So the body of Christ is not Circe. It is not a goddess. It is not a circus. We are the apostolic body. I will build my body and the gates, the thinking, and also the gates or the gateway of CERN shall not prevail against it, the apostolic body of Christ. And the gates, the gateway of CERN shall not prevail against it. Oh, man, there's an anointing here tonight. Matriculate over to the book of the Revelation of St. John the Divine. Revelation 2.14. Revelation chapter 2, verse 14. And I want you to really, really, uh, actually, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me and told me, leave Revelation 2, 14 alone. And the Holy Spirit oftentimes will change either the body of the text or the key verses in a moment within a twinkling of an eye. Instead of going to Revelation 2.14, instead of talking about Balaam, I need you to go back to Genesis 2.14. See, you have to flow according to the Holy Spirit. Genesis 2.14. Hear ye the word of the Lord. In the name of the third river is Hittikil. That is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is what? Euphrates. The fourth river is Euphrates. Highlight that word. The fourth river is Euphrates, four chambers from the brain of the Garden of Eden. Now, I need you to go back to Revelation. Let's go to Revelation, please. 16, verse 12. I got to tell you, I feel an anointing here tonight, a heavy anointing. Now, remember that term Euphrates in Genesis 2.14. Go to Revelation, the revelation of St. John the Divine, chapter 16, verse 12. Hear ye the word of the Lord. In the sixth angel, each dispensation has an angel. In the sixth angel of grace poured out his vial upon the great river, here we go, Euphrates. The same river, going back 6,000 years in Genesis 2.14, now in Revelation 16 and 12, 
the sixth angel poured out his vow upon the great river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up. The water thereof was dried up. That the way, here we go, of the kings of the east, not just China, but all nations east of the Euphrates, which is located in the Middle East, between Iraq, Iran, and Syria, the kings of the east might be prepared to march into the Middle East. There are 200 million horsemen. Now, let's notice here, go back to Matthew 16, 18, and I'm going to spend some time of laying foundation through the body of the text in Matthew 16, verse 18. Pray for the bishop tonight. Module 2, Volume 2, The End of Days, The Path of Totality. Again, The End of Days, The Path of Totality. We are living in the sixth dispensation of man. Each divine dispensation is a sign, a holy and unfallen principality angel over it, sent by Christ. An apostolic angel over the dispensation called innocence. Another angel over the dispensation of conscience. Another angel over the dispensation of human government. Human means monster. Another angel over the fourth dispensation called promise. Abraham, another angel over the fifth dispensation called the law of Moses, the time of the dispensation of the law. And the sixth dispensation that you and I are presently occupying called grace, where the body of Christ has been given a unfallen, holy and clean principality angel called Michael. And the seventh dispensation, the coming of the Christ, is the seventh angel over it. Do you guys remember the very first miracle that's recorded in the Gospels that Christ performed, turning the water into wine. Thank you, Pastor Sippy. Six barrels of water, each barrel represents a distinct dispensation of turning mankind, mostly made up of water, into the apostolic Pentecost of wine, the Holy Spirit. Six barrels, six dispensations of innocence, conscience, human government, promise, law, grace, and one might say, well, Bishop, 
who is the seventh barrel, the Messiah himself, Yeshua the Christ. The end of days, the path of totality. We are told in Revelation 9, 16 and verse 18, that a third part of men or mankind would be destroyed. Do you remember in Revelation 12 and 4, where John the Revelator is given a vision by Christ, as John sees, though the body of John was on the Isle of Patmos, but supernaturally, Christ takes him back before the very beginning. Because God did not begin when the beginning began. God began the beginning. God did not start when the start got started. God started the start. So John saw, while being on the Isle of Patmos, off of the coast of Greece, Revelation 12 and 4, that a third part of the angelic government of Christ were excommunicated out of the heavens for being in concert, in league with a corrupt principality name Lucifer to decipher which means illuminato illumination illuminati if you take the term Lucifer and write it from right to left you get a Latin Vulgate expression, recycle, which simply means the recycling of fecal matter. So a third part of the angelic government is compromised by a corrupted leader named Lucifer. That part of the heaven is called the 17 trillion hells. In Revelation 9, 16 and 18, a third part of men will be destroyed. The Holy Spirit asked me a question and said, Bishop, how many males do we have on the earth? And I knew automatically 4 billion, 4.08 billion men. But a third part of 4.08 billion men is 1 billion 360 million men will die. I want you to hear me. A third part, not why that number third? Because this is a retaliatorial move by Satan. God removes a third part of the angels of heaven in Revelation 12, 14. Now in Revelation 9, 16 and 18, a third part of men, 4.08 billion men, one third, 1 billion, 360 million will die if Revelation 9, 16 and 18 happen tonight. 10% of 200 million, these kings from the east that will walk through the, the Euphrates, 10% of 200 million is 20 million. 
10% of 20 million is 2 million. The present number of soldiers within the Chinese military industrial complex is 2.35 million or 2 million 35,000 soldiers. Now you guys come in class, you don't come in and say, what's up? This is not, listen, you guys are going to have to listen. Number one, you're late. And number two, you don't come in, okay, like you coming from, from the streets or the ghetto. This is not the place. Listen, 10% of 20 million is 2 million. China's military is a composition of 2 million 35,000 soldiers. It gets deeper. In Revelation 9, 16, 200 million footmen, 200 million footmen from the east were walk going to the west through a dried up river called Euphrates. The term Euphrates is actually a Persian term meaning the gateway. Revelation 9.16, 200 million horsemen east of the Euphrates were march to the west. Now, a lot of scholars are saying that these 200 million horsemen, footmen, is China. Yes and no. Yes, 2 million 35,000 soldiers, which is the composition of the Chinese military industrial complex. So my question is, who, what, where, and how is the other 197,965,000 extra horsemen? Uh, let me go through this again. I want you to follow me now. We are taught, ladies and gentlemen, that these 200 million horsemen are the Chinese, yes and no. Yes, a certain percentage are. So let's say Armageddon takes place tonight. And there are 2,035,000 men and women in the Chinese military industrial complex. Since that is the case, who and what are the remaining 197,965,000 soldiers, footmen, or horsemen? God told me these are principalities. I want you to hear me. This has never been taught before. The end of days, the path of totality. So the remaining, if we teach which the word of God is the truth, 200 million horsemen in Revelation 9, 16, but there's only 2 million, 35,000 Chinese soldiers. Who are the remaining 197,965,000 soldiers. 
They are principalities. The inner days, the path of totality. Again, in Revelation 9.16, these are the soldiers east of the Euphrates. If you get a chance, examine Revelation 16 in 12. Can I take my time tonight? I said, can the apostle take his time? Now, normally I don't go into the body of the text this quick, but I'm going by the leading of the Lord. Revelation 16 and 12, in the sixth angel, poured out his vow upon the great river Euphrates, the fourth river coming out of the Garden of Eden, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Now stop right there. The way of the kings. The Greek term for kings in Revelation 16 and 12 is the Greek term Basileos, B-A-S-I-L-E-U-S. That is the Greek Hellenistic term for kings. Basileus, B-A-S-I-L-E-U-S. Notice the first five letters of the term Basileus is basil. Basil in history was the first ruler of Basil the first, a ruler of the Byzantine Empire, which is the Eastern Roman Empire from 867 to 886 AD. Basil the first, was married to a male by the name of John. Second Justinian's law called Basil Laws. So the Greek word for kings is Basileus, B-A-S-I-L-E-U-S, or Basil Switzerland, the World Economic Forum. During the time of the rule of Justinian, Justinian, along later with Basil, a Byzantine law called the Basilica, B-A-S-I-L-I-K-A, in 892 AD, the Basilica law had approved same-sex marriage, same-sex restrooms, same-sex relationships. This is called the law of Basileus, B-A-S-I-L-E-U-S, or Basilica, Basilica, B-A-S-I-L-I-K-E, which means kings. So in Revelation 16 and 12, that the way of the kings of the east, the Basileus or the Basilica law, thus ordaining same-sex marriage. I want you to hear me tonight. Notice the Greek term for kings. Basileus, B-A-S-I-L-E-U-S, Basil, Switzerland. 
If you notice on Wikipedia and type in on Wikipedia the term Basileus, B-A-S-I-L-E-U-S, Basileus, Switzerland, the demonic and luciferic World Economic Forum. To your right, which is to the left, of that Wikipedia page under Basileus. And Pastor Colleen, if you can bring that link up, it will show you a photo of a silver coin of the king of Seleucid, or Seleucid, S-E-L-E-U-C-I-D. The king's name is Antiochus, A-N-T-I-O-C-H-U-S, Antiochus the first. But the reverse side of the coin, we're still in Revelation 16 and 12, breaking down the Greek word for kings. The reverse side of that coin on that Wikipedia page under Basileus. Thank you, Pastor Colley. This is the show me state. A B A S I L E U S, the reverse side of the coin shows the god goddess Apollo, which is the Greek term for hell, Apollyon. So, for you theological students, not just tonight, but those throughout the world, the Hebrew term for hell is Abaddon, which is the same demon in Greek as Apollyon. Same principality demon, same hell, two different names. Abaddon, the principality demon. Ah, the demon of destruction, Abaddon. Apollyon in Greek, the principality and the hell of destruction. One is a destroyer, Abaddon. The other one destroys Apollyon. It's the same demon under two different names. Stay there in Revelation 16 and 12. We're still laying foundation for the end of days the path of totality, the Greek term for kings in Revelation 16 and 12 is Basileus, B-A-S-I-L-E-U-S, signifying same sex. Basileus, through the Byzantinium law, called Basilica, B-A-S-I-L-I-K-A, from whence you get the term Basilica. Listen, Sistine Chapel, listen, Vatican, Basilica. On that Wikipedia page under Basileus, B-A-S-I-L-E-U-S, to your right, which would be to the left of that Wikipedia page, it will show a two-sided coin. The front side of the silver coin is the king Antiochus I. On the other side of the coin is the god goddess of transgenderism, Apollo Apollyon who is seated on an omphalos. Wait a minute, what is an omphalos? O-M-P-H-A-L-O-S. An omphalos was a seat, a gateway for the defecation of demons. You never heard of this type of teaching before. The inscription on the back of that coin is a Greek Hellenistic term meaning Antiochus, 
Antio Oxy, A N T I O X O Y, which means secretion in the cyprine text. Opalos also means the navel of the underworld. The navel on the, on, of the underworld. And this is where we get the term navy. It gets deeper. So in Revelation 16 and 12, these 200 million footmen, horsemen, but we are told, ladies and gentlemen, that 200 million minus 2 million 35,000, that's the number of men and women in the Chinese military industrial complex. So my question tonight, who and what are the remaining 197 million, 360 million soldiers? They're called principalities. I'm not here to scare you. I am here to prepare you for the coming of the Christ. Is your minds blown? Put up those faces if your minds are blown tonight. The inner days, the path of totality. Remember, there are two separate demonic kingdoms that are revealed by St. Peter, 2 Peter 2 and 4, and St. Jude, the half-brother of the Christ, in Jude 1 and 6. In 2 Peter 2 and 4, It talks about that there are demons bound into chains of darkness. They're bound into, not above, not below, not around, into the chains of darkness. You'll find that on in 2 Peter 2 and 4. Jude, verse chapter 1, verse 6, says that there are Fallen angels, Gregories, who gave us the Gregorian calendar, the Nephilims, the Watchers, are bound into everlasting chains, not in darkness, but under it. Listen, so you got demons bound into chains of darkness. That's one level, 2 Peter 2 and 4. Then you have another level of demons in Jude 1 and 6 who are bound in not just chains, but everlasting chains under darkness. Those demons that are chained under darkness are located in the river Euphrates. I want you to hear me tonight. So in Revelation 9, 14, that four angels are loosed. This is the reason why America went to war in Iraq during the 1990s, had nothing to do with capturing Saddam Hussein. This was to dry up the river Euphrates. And the paleontologists and scholars within the field of paleontology who had traveled to the Middle East between Iraq, Iran, and Syria and has heard noises beneath the waters of the Euphrates. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's continue the lay foundation. Can I take my time? Allow me to get a drink of water.
If you get an opportunity, go to, on Google.com, Euphrates River's water level hits historic low at TAPQ, T-A-B-Q-A, Dam, D-A-M, Syria. Euphrates River's water level hits historic low at TAPQ with the A silent, T A B Q A dam in Syria. Notice the second photo down. The second photo down, and Pastor Colleen, please find that link. Type in on google.com Euphrates Rivers Water level hits historic low at Tabgi or Tabga with the A silent, T-A-B-Q-A, Dam Syria. The second photo down shows an aerial map of the Euphrates River that shape that is shaped like a serpent. I want you to hear me tonight. It shows an aerial map of the Euphrates shaped like a serpent. Can I take my time tonight? You'll find that on Watchers dot news rivers dot news or euphrates rivers water level hits historic low at top god tab with with the q and a silent dam syria the darkened water is the euphrates shape like the serpent listen genesis 3 In Genesis 2, 14, the fourth river coming out from the four chambers of the brain called Eden. And even, listen, the brain of a man or a woman has four chambers. Gihon, Pison, Hittikil, and Euphrates. You see, thank you, Pastor Connor. This is the show me state. Also on Google.com, these are receipts on the CIA.gov or type in on Google.com the destruction of Iraq's southern marshes. The destruction of Iraq's Southern Marshes, M-A-R-S-H-E-S, is a PDF declassified document exposing the true reasons of the Gulf War. Had nothing to do with Saddam Hussein on finding so-called weapons of mass destruction. It was the blow up the Euphrates so they can keep that which is demonic inside. It gets deeper. On, you see, people say, well, Bishop, you're making this up. No, it's on the CIA's website. You can also type in on Google.com, another link on Google.com. Taliban says plans to formally join China's Build and Road Initiative. Taliban says plans to formally join China's Built and Road Initiative. You'll find that on Reuters.com. R-E-U-T-E-R-S, Reuters.com. Opt-Ed. October 19th, 
2023. Now, if you remember a year, year and a half ago, Sleepy Joe blundered the Afghanistan rescue of American soldiers. And from that time, actually going back to two years ago, China has now taken over Afghanistan. Why? Because Revelation chapters 9 and chapter 16, the armies of the East is now taking place. Right beside Pastor Colleen's name. See, this is the show me state. You got to show people. I don't blame them. Why would China not only take over the heroin traffic out of Afghanistan, Pakistan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, but also China's Belt and Road Initiative would counter the state of Israel's Bengarian project. Listen, Netanyahu, please stay there in Matthew 16 and 18, Mantra 2, Volume 2, the end of days, the path to totality. You notice on Google Maps, type in Google Maps and type in China to Euphrates. I want you to see this. Type in China to Euphrates, which is 6,805 miles from China to the great river Euphrates. Notice on Google Maps, it shows a ley line from China to the Euphrates in the Middle East near Iraq, Iran, and Syria. Compare that map to the One Belt, One Road initiative map. It's on researchgate.net. ResearchGate.net under one belt, one road. Now, Bishop, this is a map showing areas under one belt, one road initiative. What is the one belt, one road initiative that was actually created by Genghis Khan and later picked up in 2011? in a speech in Kakistan by the Chinese president and premier Xi Jinping. The One Built, One Road initiative is to establish Chinese imperialism throughout the West. If you guys remember a couple of months ago, that we sh showed you guys a map of not just China's Belt and Road Initiative, the Silk Road, and where the state of Israel wants to counter that by building through the Gaza Strip the Ben-Gurion Canal Project. That's, this is what October 7th is about. So then China is on a collision course against Netanyahu in the state of Israel. The end of days, the pathway to totality. So the map on researchgate.net, one belt, one road, if you have that link, uh, please put that up, uh, Pastor Colleen. Researchgate.net, like forward slash one built, one road, or the Silk Road Initiative. It counters against the Zionist plan 
to build a canal through the Gaza Strip. I got to use wisdom. Now, as a side note, those nations that let the One Belt, One Road initiative were targeted. I'm not going to say, listen, I got to use wisdom. According to the Haaretz newspaper, let me continue to use wisdom. Thank you, Pastor Sam. Haaretz, H-A-A-R-E-T-Z, one of my favorite papers on the earth. No fake news. They produce the truth. An Israeli newspaper, it says, is is Real is planning on inland Suez Canal. Across it, desert, at what cost? Israel is planning an inland Suez Canal. Is the op-ed on the Haaretz newspaper, January 17, 2023, by one of the most powerful journalists on this earth, Moshe Gilad, G-I-L-A-D, the Ben-Gurion Project. This has nothing to do with Hamas. This has everything to do by countering against Chinese imperialism. So then it's China's One Belt, One Road Initiative versus the SOI's Bengarian project going through the Gaza Strip. It gets deeper. In the Jerusalem Post, under the Sinai Plan, opt-in August 27, 2014, the Sinai Plan of removing every Gaussian in order to build the Ben-Gurion Canal that will not only take over the Suez Canal out of Egypt, but would counter China's One Belt, One Road initiative. Remember in Revelation 9-11, 9-11, the Hebrew term for the 17 trillion hells is a badon. A B A W D O N, meaning destruction or incubi. The Greek term for hell in Revelation 9 11 is the Greek term apollyon. A-P-O-L-L-Y-O-N. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. Abaddon, lowercase. Apollyon, lowercase. Abaddon, destruction, incubi. Apollyon, destroyer, succubi. It's the same principality demon, but under two different interpretations. It's the same Hell of 17 trillion hells, but under multiple interpretations, it gets deeper. The term hell has given birth to the following hells. Abaddon, the Hebrew term for hell, destruction, Ancubi. Apollyon, from which you get the term Apollo. Remember the back of that coin? The front side of the coin of the king Antichus the first, the back of the coin showing Apollyon, who has breast. Listen, the back of that coin of the god goddess Apollyon that shows 
is demons sitting on a chair called the omphalos, an instrument used for the deprecation of demons. So Apollyon on the back of that coin is multi-breasted. Where did transgenderism come from? It came from the serpent. Where did homosexuality come from? From the serpent. Where did lesbianism came from? Come from? From the serpent. Thank you, Pastor Colling. Oh, Pastor Colling, you are so beautiful. You see, on that link, right beside Pastor Colling's name, it shows a coin. On the back of that coin, the silver coin is a polyon sitting on a chair of defecation called Ophelus. And Apollyon has two breasts. That's Balfamet. And Balfamet's face with two cornucopia horns, listen, pan Africanists, also represents the face of the uterus. With two fallopian tubes, the face, no, you're not Balfamet, women of God. But prior to the woman's fall, she did not have a uterus, which also represents the face of Balfamet. Two fallopian tubes, a two-horn cornucopia system, and uh, the term uterus means hysteria, his serpentine hysteria. Hell signifies it has a transgendered paradigm. Hades, Lucifer, is the masculine side of Sheol, S-H-E-O-L, the feminazi side called Lucifer, L-U-C-Y-F-E-R, or Lilith. Let's go through this again. Hell has two genders. It's masculine Hades, incubation, and it's feminism, she o s h e o she feminine o o l womb so hades is the masculine side of shield shield is the feminized side of hades the end of days the path of totality. Please stay in the body of the text in Matthew 16, 18. Hell, the grave, the pit, and the abyss, abysmal, Abyssinia. Listen, Ethiopians. No, I'm not calling you devils, um, Ethiopians, but the term Abyssinia has an acronym meaning abyss, A-B-Y-S-S, darkness transcending time. See, not only does God transcend time, darkness transcends it. And from the abyss, you got the underworld, purgatory. This is where you get the name of the movie, The Purge, Purgatory. Tartarus, Gehinnom, G-E-H-I-N-N-O-M, Gehinnom, the Valley of Slaughter, the Valley of Tophet. Come on, Jeremiah. Or Gehenna, G-E-H-E-N-N-A. The Greek word for Gehenna is the term Gabin, G-A-I-B-E-N, Hinnom, the Valley of Abortion. 
every single abortion in history, unbeknownst to the people, was a dedicational offering to Satan. It gets deeper. The end of days, the path of totality. The Holy Spirit said, Bishop, let the apostles know tonight. Stop saying the phrase, they are in limbo. The term limb, L-I-M-B, is nowhere to be found in scripture, in the original text. God did not create limbs. He created you in his image, his character, and after his likeness, his reflection and personality. So the term limb or limbo is hell. So when you say, and I had to repent of it uh, this month, because I used to say years ago, you're in limbo. You just put a curse on yourself and you put a curse on somebody else when you say they are in limbo, which you're saying they are in hells. It gets deeper perdition. In Isaiah 5, 14, hell hath enlarged herself. So, wait a minute now. So the composition of not just 10 hells, but 17 trillion hells is a transgendered entity. Male Hades female Sheol, the grave in Isaiah 5, 14. Hell or Sheol hath enlarged or pregnated herself without measure. Hades, dark masculinity, Sheol, dark femininity. Lucifer L, Satan S, Devil D, there's your LSD. It gets deeper. Say that in the body of the text in Matthew 16, 18. The inner days, the path of totality. Do me a favor. But the Holy Spirit just stopped me and said, it's not time to go discern yet, Bishop. Let's go to the foundation. Matthew 16, verse 18. Can I get a drink of water? Can I take my time? Allow the bishop to wipe some of the anointing off. Have you ever heard anyone teach on the composition of hells and seven trillion hells? Listen, this gets deeper. Matthew 16, verse 18. Christ is indeed establishing what we call apostolicity. Christ was asking the 12 apostles a question. Whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? Now, Again, ladies and gentlemen, the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter number 16. I'm going slow today. Thank you, Pastor Charity. Chapter 16, verse 13. Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? You see, Christ will never ask a question with a question. Christ will always ask a question with the answer contained within the question. Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? That's the question. Here's wisdom. The answer within the question, circle I, 
and circle am, am, I am. Now, verse 15, but whom say ye that I am? Now, wait a minute now. The first letter of the Old Testament, Old Testament scholarship is the letter I, the ninth letter of the Western alphabet. The light of the body is the I. And of course, the first letter of the New Testament scholarship is the letter T. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, or it is finished. So the I, the body of Christ, hung on the T, the first letter of the New Testament, the cross. The letter I, Genesis 1 and 1, Connected to the last two letters. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Connected to the last word, to the first two letters of the last word. And Revelation 22, verse 21, A-M or Amen. So wait a minute now. Before Abraham was, I am. So the first letter of the Holy Scriptures is I the first two letters of the last word of the Holy Scriptures is A-M. Before Abraham was, I, I am. The deep state came for Christ when he was in the garden. The deep state devils asked the Lord, are you Yeshua of Nazareth? The scriptures clearly reveal, he said, I am. And when Christ said, I am, the deep state went backwards, back to the future. Now, in verse number 18, the first two men that Christ ordained as apostles were it was Andrew, a and Peter P. The two brothers, wait a minute. So the first two men that were ordained as apostles, not called but ordained as apostles in John 1 was Andrew A and Peter P. Those are the first two letters of the term apostolic. Or apostolistical, apostolicity. Now, do me a favor. The Holy Spirit told me, go over to John 1, keep a marker there in Matthew 16, 18. You know, we're just laying foundation concerning module two, volume two, the inner days, the path of totality. Now, go to John 1, John chapter 1. Here is Christ laying the apostolic governmental foundation. In John chapter 1, let's examine verse number 38. John 1, 38. Yeshua turned and saw them following it was Andrew and John, and saith unto them, what seek ye? Since Hebrew is written from right to left, what Christ was really asking, what key ye? If you take the word seek, S-W-E-K, and write it rabbinically from right to left, you get the word key. Keys. What seek ye? What keys are you looking for? Now remember, Christ gave to Peter the keys of the kingdom of heaven, but Christ did not give to Peter the keys of the kingdom of God. You didn't catch that. You see, Christ only gave to Peter the keys of the kingdom of heaven, 
But Christ did not give to Peter the keys of the kingdom of God. So the keys of the kingdom of heaven was for St. Peter to establish apostolic government in time on the earth going to heaven. That's the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Christ gave St. Paul <coughs> the keys of the kingdom of God. Throughout the books of the Acts of the Apostles, be, um, better known as the Acts of the Holy Spirit, not just in chapter 9, but also in chapter 28 of Acts. Christ gave Peter, the keys of the kingdom of heaven, to establish apostolicity, the body of Christ, in time on the earth, going to heaven. Christ gave St. Paul the keys of the kingdom of God to establish the body of Christ from heaven coming down to earth. I told you, listen, listen. I am an apostolic assassin. I am a Pentecostal mercenary. See, you have to learn what lane that you're called to operate in. So Peter was an apostle of Yeshua the Christ. Paul was an apostle of Christ Yeshua. Here's the difference. Peter's mantle was apostolicity, the apostolic government established on the earth and saturating the heavens. That's Peter. Paul's mantle was the complete opposite as the kingdom of God. Paul's mantle was to establish the body of Christ in the heavens to saturate the earth in time. So Paul had to check Peter, and he is saying, Peter, you're not an apostle to the Gentiles. I am. And Peter had to check Paul by saying, Paul, you're not an apostle to the Jews, but you are an apostle to the Gentiles. Peter, the keys of the kingdom of heaven, of the body of Yeshua the Christ. Paul, the keys of the kingdom of God, of Christ, Hamashiach, establishing Yeshua on the earth. So in John 138, what seek ye or what keys are you looking for, Andrew and John? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, master. Andrew and John were searching for the master key. What seek or what key? Ye? What, you see, they had all the keys of the previous six dispensations of innocence, conscience, human government, promise, law, grace, but they needed the master key of the seven dispensation. What seek ye? They said the master key. Christ is the master key that unlocks every dispensation, that unlocks the seven golden candlesticks, the menorah, that unlocks mysteries. The master key is not Buddha, that big, fat, ugly demon. The master key is not in Hinduism, is not in these demons called Laura Shiva, but the master key is the Christ. Wait a minute. Now, now look at the latter portion of John 1.38. Andrew and John, Pastor Ty and Pastor Carlotta, asked the master the question in John 138, where 
dwelleth thou. Christ was not, listen, Christ is there as the master key, but Andrew and John was not asking the Christ for his physical address. The disciples, Andrew and John, was asking Christ, where are you dwelling supernaturally? Where dwellest thou? Not your physical address, but we want to be where Christ is supernaturally. The response of the Christ, come and see, or come and sense. They came, Andrew and John, and saw or was where Christ dwelt. Now, I'll go back to Matthew 16, verse number 18. Upon this Petra, Christ, I will build not, not, so say the first goddess of the Greek empire called church. This is where you get the term church from, from the first goddess in Greek mythology, Circe, C-I-R-C apostrophe E. Well, who took out the body of Christ and who put in the term church? The Vatican did. At the 325 AD conference in Nicene, Turkey, it was Pope Sylvester, and his girlfriend, Constantine, along with 365 bishops, each bishop representing each day of the demonic Gregorian calendar, took out the apostolic power of body of Christ and put in the name of a Greek goddess named Circe. Can I, can I take my time? I'm gonna get me a drink of water, listen. As a side note, has our, uh, is our sound coming in clear? Listen. In order for you, I want you to hear me tonight. In order for you to be anointed, you first must anoint God. Allow me to explain that. In order for you to be anointed, you and I first must anoint God. There are scriptural precedents for what I just said. In the Gospels, four women having four different backgrounds and ethnicities coming from four different cultures in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Matthew, a Samaritan, Mark, a Gentile, Luke, according to Josephus, a Canaanite woman, and John, a Jewish sister. All had a box of ointment. See, these four women in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John of the family of, of, of Lazarus, Mary and Martha, whatever part of the body that they anointed God, that was the part of their body that was healed. Whatever part of the body that they anointed. So wait a minute now. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, four different women, four different colors, four different ethnicities, four different historical traumas healed by the same Christ. This is called true synoptic healing. One sister anointed his head. She was healed psychologically. Another sister anointed the feet of God, God healed 
her self-esteem because she was always stepped on by men. Another one healed one of the hands of Christ, which means she was healed from a life of domestic abuse. And another one anointed his feet again. Her femininity, her self-esteem was restored. You cannot. You see, a lot of you want God to anoint you. God will never anoint you unless you first anoint him. How can I anoint him, Bishop? Because the anointing is already in you. I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is Christ's power. The anointing is the cloud. Come on, Moses, wherever that cloud went by day, and wherever that pillar of fire went by night, the body of Christ, the apostolic, with the Holy Spirit between the two cherubims on the Ark of the Covenant followed. We got people in the body of Christ saying that they are anointed, but they're not. They have gone west with the Holy Spirit but the cloud has gone east, the anointing. Yes, you're born again. Yes, you have the Holy Spirit, but you're not always anointed because you're not always following obedience. The inner days, the path of totality. And as a side note, the body of Christ, the apostolic was crucified. The body of Christ, it was Joseph of Arimathea, and the term Arimathea means arithmetic. He was a scholar of numbers, begged for the body of Christ, the apostolic, and the body of Christ, you and I, was in the tomb. After Mary Magdalene, the first female apostle came to the apostles, who ran toward the tomb? Peter and John. Peter, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. John represented the agape love of Christ. Though love, John outran the key giver, Peter, to the tomb. But love, John, had to wait on the carrier of the keys of the kingdom of heaven, Peter, to come and unlock the tomb. In a days, the path of totality. So in Matthew 16, 18, the body of Christ is not built on Peter. The body of Christ is built on the Petra, capital P-E-T-R-A, the Christ. The Vatican has been lying to the world for the past 1,800 years. Peter was not the first pope. Peter was crucified upside down on a cross through the edict of Neo. I want you to hear me. Listen. The, through the edict of Neo, who crucified Peter upside down. Because Peter said, I'm not worthy to die like my master, the Christ. So the upside down cross of Peter represents two apostolic paradigms. Number one, it represents the key of the kingdom of heaven. And number two, an upside down cross of Peter represents the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So in Matthew 16, 18, in the gates 
or the gateway of hell or the cern of hell shall never prevail against the apostolic body. Stay there in Matthew 16, 18. The Greek term for gates is gateway. The gates or the gateway of hell or cern shall not prevail against the apostolic. The gates of the 17 trillion hells will never prevail against apostolicity. On CERN's website, they said that they are the gateway of the universe with gravitational poles. I want you to hear me. CERN says that they are the gateway of the universe. So in Matthew 16, 18, the gates, not just Bill, but the gates, the gateways, the portals of hell shall not prevail against the body of Christ. The logo of CERN is the logo of the beast. Can I take my time tonight? I said, can the bishop take his time? Listen. On CERN's website, it talks about, they said out of their mouth that they are the gateway to the universe. If you go to public dark dot archive dot web dot CERN or just type in on google.com research at CERN a gateway to the universe it's on their website research at CERN a gateway to the universe having a large hadron collider and facilities for the production of exotic forms of matter, including anti-matter. CERN has established a reputation at the forefront of research proven through its experiments past and present. What these devils want to do out of... Uh, Eastern France and Western Switzerland is to tap into the portals of 17 trillion hells. Thank you, Pastor uh, Colleen. See, this is to show me, Steve. You got to show people. It's saying right there on the website, they are the gateway of the universe. And the gates of hell or the gateway of the universe, CERN shall not prevail against the apostolic body of Christ. Now, let's examine the logo for CERN. Allow me to wipe some of the anointing off. Is your minds blown tonight? Ladies and gentlemen, is your minds blown tonight? Put up those faces if your minds are blown this evening. You're getting a world-class education. Module two, volume two. The end of days, the pathway of totality. The insignia, the logo of CERN is of the beast, not just 666. CERN is named after a demon god of the underworld called Cernunus. C E R N U double N O S. Cernunus is the demon 
principality God of the underworld. If you go to Wikipedia and type in Sir Nunes, C E R N U double N O S. Oh my Lord. Pastor SSJ, this is this is heavy. You can also type on Google Images the term Sununus, Sir Nunes, C E R N U double N O S on Google Images. You'll see images of this Celtic, Babylonian, Persian, Greek, and Roman god, goddess of the underworld. This is what CERN is named after Sir Nunes. CERN is located outside of Geneva, Switzerland, in a Western French village called Saint Genet Poly. Saint Genet S T dot Genet G E N I S, which means genitals, or G E N I X Pule. P O U I double L Y. This is the headquarters of, of CERN or Sununus in Saint Genet Poli, which is a French term, P O U I double L Y. But the original name where CERN is located for Saint Genet Poli, P O U I double L Y. Is the Roman Empire term Apoliocom or Apolicom? Apoliocom, A double P O L I A C U M. Well, CERN is today near Geneva, Switzerland, on the western border of Switzerland, on the eastern border of France in St. Genet Poli, but the original name of St. Genet is Apollyocum. Apollyocum, A-P-P-O-L-I-A-C-U-M, which is the original Roman name for the village called St. Genet Poli, P-O-U-I-L-L-Y. Notice the, the Latin term, apoliacum. Now, the first six letters of the term apoliacum is apoli. Allow the apostle to teach, A-double-P-O-L-I, which means apollos, of Apollon, Apollyon. Revelation 9, listen, John. So the first six letters of the original name of Saint Genet, Polio, which the original name was not Saint Genet, where CERN is now, it's Apollyocom. The first six letters, A double P O L I, Apolly is the acronym Latin term for Apollo. And Apollo, a multi-breasted demon god on the back of that coin, on that Wikipedia page. And the last four letters of Apollyacom is Acum, A-C-U-M. Apollyacum or Apollyacum, Acum, A C U M, is a Latin word meaning to be possessed, meaning to take over, 
meaning to hybrid. That is the true name of the orders of CERN, not St. Janae Pauli on the eastern border of France, but it's the Roman Empire name of Apolliacum. A W P O L I A C U M. If you see it on Wikipedia, uh, if it's on Wikipedia, please put it up, Pastor uh, Colleen. A poly, A W P O L I, means Apollyon, the Greek interpretation of the Hebrew word Abaddon for hell. In the last four letters of the original name of CERN's headquarters is Akam. A-C-U-M, in Latin, it means to be possessed, to take over, to make a hybrid, a polyacom, which is a village that goes back thousands of years to Roman antiquity, and Apollyacom was the world leader of building temples unto to their god goddess, Apollyon. And Apollyon, along with Pergamon, is Satan's seat in western Switzerland and eastern France. Where Satan's seat is Apollyacom, Saint Genet Cern. As a side note, there was a young scholar, a young minister in Acts by the name of Apollos, who was eloquent in speech, whom St. Paul taught as his apostolic son. Apollos, that was not his real name. That was a slave name. St. Genet, G-E-N-I-S, or G-E-N-I-X, a small village in France, near Geneva, Switzerland, Apolly Acom, Apolly Apollo, Apollyon, and Acom means possession or belonging to. If you look up on Wikipedia under Saint Genet, G E N I S, Poule, P O U. I double L Y on Wikipedia. You will see a section on that Wikipedia page under Saint Genet of the term hydrology or hydrology. Hydro. Remember on that cookie a couple of weeks ago? Hydrox, hydro. Hydrogen gels, allow me to use wisdom, snake juice, hydrology section. Getting back to the demon god of CERN called Cernunos. You go to Wikipedia and type in Cernunos, C E R N U. N N O S on Wikipedia. You can also type it in under Google Images. This is the demon god of CERN called Cernunas. On Google Images, also on the Britannia, Britannica. Uh, and as a side note, the logo of Britannica is a poppy seed, a hair, the heron trap, another topic for another day. There is a thread for your studies in your quiet time. Type in on google.com, established in 1954, CERN is based in a Northwestern suburb of Geneva. Established in 1954, CERN is based in a Northwestern suburb 
of Geneva is on the link site en dot r a double t i b h a dot com or established in 1954, CERN is based in a northwestern suburb of Geneva on en dot r a double t i b h a dot com. It's a thread. The god, the demon god of CERN is Cernonus. Cernonus. C E R N U W N O S. If you get an opportunity, listen, I want you guys to type in Lord Small L Shiva S H I V A statue unveiled. Lord with the small L. Shiva, S-H-I-V-A, statue unveiled. On the 18th of June, CERN unveiled an unusual new landmark, a two meters high, tall statue of the Indian deity, a demon, Lord Shiva. It's under the CERM document server. Lord Shiva statue unveiled on 18th June. CERN unveiled an unusual new landmark, a two meter tall statue of the Indian demon or demon, Lord Shiva. Notice how it is shaped. If you get an opportunity, thank you, Pastor Colleen. Right beside Pastor Colleen's name, click on that link. Notice that demonic entity called Lord with a small L Shiva. Barack Obama was in front, his picture was revealed on the front page, the front of the Newsweek magazine some years ago with Barack Obama shaped like the Lord of Sheba. Look it up on Google Images. Obama, Sheba, Newsweek. Obama, Sheba, S-H-I-V-A, Newsweek. Why would Barack Obama do that? Because that's who and what he is. Let me get a drink of water. It's deeper. We'll ask questions after the class is over with. Listen, in my conclusion, now remember in Revelation 9.16, go back to Revelation 9.16. There you go, Doc, uh, Pastor Pete. Revelation 9, 16. Is your minds blown tonight? Put up those faces if your minds are blown. The end of days, the path of totality. I rebuke any and all. <laughs> Uh, any interference through this class tonight. Revelation 9, 16. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. That's 200 million. So wait a minute, China has 2 million 35,000 military personnel. So I was asking God in prayer, well, Lord, who are the remaining 197,965,000 extra soldiers? God says they're principalities. 
And the Greek term for kings is Basileus, B-A-S-I-L-E-U-S. The kings, the principalities over the east. And we are told, ladies and gentlemen, in Revelation 9, 18, and by these wars, also Armageddon, the third part of men were killed by fire, smoke, and brimstone. Wait a minute now. Now, remember in Revelation 12 and 4, a third part of the angels, of the angelic government fell. Now, Satan is coming back and wants to destroy a third part of the population of the earth. One third of 8.1 billion people is 2 billion 700 million people. One third of 8.1 billion people is 2 billion 700 million people. But God is saying one third of men, one third of the total population of man today, man or males, 4.08 billion men, one third of 4.08 billion men is 1 billion 360 million men will be slaughtered in Revelation 9.18, Satan wants to emasculate, demasculate God's creation. In my conclusion, the inner days, the path of totality, the only way that you can understand this teaching, you have to be called to it. And so there is a conspiracy of emasculation. And then now the Euphrates River is being dried up. You can hear demons in principal. I'm telling you, it will come out of the Euphrates River. And the Euphrates River, according to Genesis 2.14, is the fourth river of the fourth chamber coming from the brain of the Garden of Eden. Gihon, Pihon, Hittite, and Euphrates also represents the four chambers of one's brain. And that is it today. After one hour, 48 minutes, and two seconds, a module two, volume two, the end of days, the path of totality, and I thank you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We're not done yet. Listen. If you guys get an opportunity, I want you to go to one more link and we're going to open up the floor for questions. Type in the end from the beginning on google.com. It's on discover.hubpages.com discover.hubpages.com or the in from the beginning, opt-ed January 27, 2024. It will show a photo of a tree with the serpent wrapped around and they treat, notice, a tree to make one wise in Genesis 3 and 6, the term wise means homo sapien. Prior to Adam's fall, man did not have a DNA. And we did not have an RNA. We did not have deroxyribonic acid RNA, or a DNA. And we did not have RNA, ribonaric acid. So we didn't have deroxyribonic acid DNA, neither did we have ribonaric acid or RNA. So on that picture of that tree with the serpent wrapped around 
the trunk of the tree on hubpages.com or the end from the beginning, the serpent is shaped like a DNA strand or helix code. Helix, H-E-L-I-X, helix. To hex, to place a curse. We're going to open up the floor for questions. And I want you, remember the the last four letters of the term Apollia Occam. Remember that term, Apollia Occam, which is the original name for St. Genet Pole, which is the headquarters for CERN. Apollia Occam, capital A. Double P O L I A C U M. Now, if you type on, and this is on a government website, this is not a conspiracy website, on NIH.gov or type in on Google.com, accessory cavitated. Uterine malformation, a com, a c u m, a scoping review, accessory, cavitated, c a v i t a t e d, uterine malformation, a com, a scoping review. I want you to take a look at the medical term malformation. Now, the Holy Spirit revealed to me earlier this morning, which I didn't even know, that the term malefactor, those five crosses on Calvary, Christ, the two thieves, two malefactors. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. The show me state. God says they they were not only two male factors, Bishop, or teenage criminals under Roman law, but the term male factor also means malformation. Many young men, including adults, were crucified because they were genetically malfunctional. Heterial paternal superfecundation, a twin. Now I'm gonna say something that you will not find it online anywhere. Oh, thank God we got our Brazilian students. Oh, God bless you, Pastor Thiago. God bless you. God spoke to me, Apostle Ty and Apostle Sam, Apostle Jody Bird and Pastor Colleen, that the two malefactors were not only teenage criminals, male factors under Roman law, but they were actually twin brothers. You won't find it in any lexicon. You won't find it in, in through any theological institution. This came from God. Here your paternal superfecundation. It means a mother has fraternal twins. And this is where you get the term fraternity. Listen, Boule. The twins belong to her, but the twins don't belong to the same father. And many times these twins are born with two eyes, but two different colors of eyes, one brown, one blue. That's not normal. The two male factors are male malformations on Calvary were actually twins who were deemed dysfunctional as a genetic misprint 
deemed to be crucified, twin brothers from the same mother, but two different fathers. You will not find it anywhere throughout the world of, the, of systematic theology. I know this is mind blowing. It blew my mind. I said, Lord, repeat that. You got five crosses, Christ, two thieves, adult criminals under Roman law, two malefactors. Yes, Bishop, they are male factors, teenage criminals, adolescents under Roman law, but they're also called malformations, male factors, malformations. They're the offspring as twins from two different fathers. Hitereal paternal superfecundation, but also the two malefactors of male formations had suffered from, listen, ambiguity genitalia. Ambiguity. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, genitalia. Now, what does that mean? I'm almost done here. Listen. Remember the term ambiguous genitalia. Do you guys remember that? The term ambiguous genitalia. That also means malformation. So these two malefactors, male factors, two teenage criminals in Calvary also suffered, according to Roman law, malformations, ambiguous genitalia, born with a male organ and born with a female organ. That's not natural. That's a curse. Also born as twins, malformated through the womb of their mother through two different fathers, Hereal paternal superfecundation. You won't find it even in the scriptures because it was taken out by Rome. Oh, you're not ready for this. Listen, do you understand how mind blowing this is? So on that government NIH.gov site, it gives the medical interpretation of the term akum, akum, a poly akum, a double p o l i, then akum, a c u m, the original name of Saint Jeanne Poli, which is a village in France, which is the headquarters of CERN. Right beside Pastor Colney's name is the link. Do you understand? It is the link there. So another was a coom is a malformation, a sexual malformation, a genetical misprint. Oh, Lord have mercy. Let's open the floor for questions. <laughs> Listen, have you ever, now be honest, have you ever heard anyone, t at least on this level? No. And if they told you that they taught this or they heard this, they're lying. This is the reveal. Oh, my God. Pastor Sam, this is the reveal year. Now, remember China's Belt and Road Initiative from China? throughout East, Central, and Western Europe will counter against the state of Israel's Ben-Gurion project of building a canal through Gaza in an attempt to counter Xi Jinping's One Belt, One Road initiative that would take us into World War III. Let's open the floor for Q&A. <laughs> you see, never heard of this kind of teaching. Thank you. You see, 
Thank you, Chu. You see, uh, this is the show me state. This is the show me state. And under that NIH link accessory, cavitated uterine malformation, or a cum, which is the last four letters of the Roman term, a polyacum, A P O L I A C U M, which is the original name for the French village of Saint Genet, G E N I S, Poule, P O U I W L Y, which is the world headquarters of CERN and their demonic god, goddess, Sir Nunes of C E R N U W N O. S, a coom, malformation. Thank you, everyone, for joining the bishop tonight. We're going to open up the floor for Q&A for about five to ten minutes, and then we're going to uh, take up the Lord's times and offer. Uh, listen, did you learn something today? I said, did you learn something? Put up those faces if your minds were blown today. Listen. Up those faces. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. If you want to know what CERN means, CERN is the act for the Celtic, Babylonian, Greek, Roman, Persian god of Cernunus. Look on Wikipedia and look up Cernunus on Google Images, and you will see the photo of that demon who then is the God of CERN. Any questions tonight? I, you probably filled out a whole chapter of a book, listen, full of notes. I got to tell you, this is probably one of the greatest teachings, most deepest teachings I've ever done in 41 years of global apostolic ministry. Thank you, everyone, for joining the bishop tonight. Thank you so much. Crane time, jaw reconstruction surgery. And we do have tickets for you, okay? We'll call tickets. If your brain matter, your jaw, and your neck needs to be reconstructed because no one on this earth is teaching this, in this on this level through spiritual examination of the scriptures as we are apostolically through a meticulous anointing dissecting and exposing darkness. Everything goes together like a puzzle, Pastor Grace. Everything goes together like a, let me find out. <laughs> Listen, Pastor Chu. Oh, okay. Let me find my blown, blown out mind. <laughs> Wait one moment. <laughs> Listen, okay? Ooh, oh, my God. Why is the creator referred to the God of Israel? Over to, oh, great question, Pastor Ty. Here is the answer. Let me get a drink of water quickly. Now, it gets back. You guys remember, oh, uh, that teaching when um, Russia invaded Ukraine or two years ago, you know, two years ago, uh, the lecture series, Russia, Ukraine, the CIA, and the Rothschild conspiracy to destroy Vladimir Putin and broke down along with the Kyrie Irving situation, okay? There's a great distinction between the state of Israel versus the nation of Israel. Now, the word of the Lord, when it talks about God is the God of Israel, he's not talking about he's the God of the state of Israel. I got to be careful. I got to use. He's not saying that God is the God of the S.O.I. The state of Israel, 99.9.9% of them are absolutely beautiful people. And my beautiful Israeli brothers and sisters all over the world, the bishop loves you. And so does our staff here in Los Angeles and in New York. The state of Israel, they are Israelis. 
but they're not Israelites. So when the word of the Lord talks about that God is the God of Israel, he's not talking about he is the God of the SOI. He is the God of the original Hebrews and he is the God of the original Jews. Well, well, Bishop, who are the original Israelites? Who there? Who are the original Shemites? And who is the original House of Israel? Black America in the Black diaspora. People don't want to hear that, but it's the truth. Now, do you guys remember the book? And I kept I, I, we invited this writer, Pastor Colin, to be on our radio show. And um, his staff said they will uh, definitely get back to us. And they will have this author. He wants to come on because he, he's heard my teachings. I didn't know that. Past, uh, Dr. Elhan Elyak, who wrote the book the uh, concerning the Kanzarian Hypothesis. Okay? He said, and he's an Israeli scholar, 95% uh, of the present day Israelis cannot trace their bloodline into the Holy Land of Israel or Palestine. This is not me. This is not anyone from the nation of Islam. This is a powerful white Israeli scholar who said 95%, okay, uh, of the term Israeli, these Israelis, 95%, can only trace their bloodline to Turkey, Mongolia, and central China through the Han Dynasty. Okay? Now, a German philosopher by the name of Dr. August Ludwig von Slosher created and concocted the term Semite. On the ADL's website, the Anti-Defamation League, they said that the term Semite Sim mythical was created and coined by a German philosopher, but Pastor SSJ, the ADL, did not give the name of the philosopher, but I will. Dr. August Ludwig von V O N Schlosser, capital S C H L O Z E R. Slosher is a German name. Thank you so much, Pastor Colleen. Dr. August Ludwig von Slosher, a German, was subsidized and paid by the German Rothschilds in 1770 to create the term Semite, S-E-M-I-T-E, -E, or Semitical. Nowhere in the Holy Scriptures will you see or read the term Sim, S E M, or Semite. Why? Because the term Sim was not the name of the son of Noah. The name of the son of Noah, the oldest son, was Shem, capital S H E M. 
the acronym for the term is Shemite or Shemetical. My Israeli brothers and sisters who we love, 99.9% .9 of them are absolutely beautiful people. Only one family I expose, that's the Rothschilds, that's it. The SOI, allow me to go slow. They are symmetrical, but they're not shimmetical. They'll tell you, but it means say, it does not mean the same thing. Symmetrical is actually a German Prussian word meaning Israeli, nothing wrong with that. It's a beautiful word, nothing wrong. But you cannot place a symmetrical square into a rounded piece of a Shemite circle. Do you, uh, you, you see, what they're trying to do is present to the world by telling black folk you're African. Now, look at this now. But that's a lie. And why is it a lie? Because the continent was never called Africa. The continent, ladies and gentlemen, was called Alkebulin. Type that in, Pasacon. Claim Alkebulin, meaning the Garden of Eden, which is a Coptic Egyptian word meaning the Garden of Eden. Well, my bishop, apostle, how did Alkebulin, the Garden of Eden in the Egyptian Coptic lexicon, become Africa? I'll tell you. During the Second Punic War in 202 BC, a white Roman general by the name of Leo, Leo Scipio Africanus, A F R I C A N U S, plundered the continent beginning with Carthage which is present-day Libya in Tanzania, Second Punic War in 202 BC, defeated, defeated Hannibal, forced him to, to commit suicide, and changed the name of the continent from the Garden of Eden, Alkebulin, to the name, the Roman name, Africanus, which is called Africa today. Black folk, we, you've been lied to. Well, see, this is what the plan of the deep state is. Let's keep you stuck in Africa because we don't want you to know that you are the original man and you are the original woman, sisters, and you are the original house of Israel and that you are the original Hebrews and you are the original Jews. We don't want you to know that. And even if you say for us to watch a video from Hebrew to Negroes, we will destroy you because we don't want you to know who you are. So let's keep you Negro which comes from the Greek word necro, N-E-C-R-O, which means autopsy of flesh, which means necropolis or necromancy, one having sex with a dead corpse. That's what the term Negro means. But you got ignorant for it means black and Spanish. When we're not talking about Spanish, 
You see, the people are always making excuses. So the term Negro comes from the Greek word necro, necrophilia, necrophilia, necromancy, necromancy, having sex with a dead corpse. Someone going to a graveyard, digging up the casket, prying open the casket, get it inside and having sex with the dead corpse. That's what Negro means, necro, necromancy. But you celebrate your Black History Month, the shortest month, not just the year, but named after the Roman transgender god called Febris, F-E-B-R-U-S, a transgendered entity. You got your kente cloth, your shade butter, calling yourself ugga bugga boo and going to hell because you don't know that you are the original Hebrews, but the system doesn't want you to know. It's okay to have one hand on the bottle of Hennessy and your left hand on the backside of a transvestite at the cotton club. That's okay, but, oh Lord, but don't tell people to watch this video. Do you understand? And you got race pimps. Reverend Al Vitamin B Deficient Sharpton, who was an FBI informant during the 80s and 90s. Reverend Al Vitamin B Deficient Sharpton, he's a pimp in a suit. Jesse Jack, these are race Pimps, Benjamin Crump, boule, black bouleist Negroes of the black skulls and bones who are the gatekeepers. They won't come to your city if black folk are killing black folk. But if a white cop, they'll come there, they'll tell you burn up the city, give you a little check, and they go home uh, Richer than ever. Why? Because we're ignorant. You see? We are the original Hebrews. We are the original Jews. So when it says God is the God of Israel, he's not called the God of the SOI. I'm using wisdom. I don't want us to give a strike or be taken down. He's the God of the nation of Israel, the original Israelites. The devil is a lie. Thank you, Pastor Grace. Next question. <laughs> I have to continue to use wisdom. Bishop, I do not support Zionism. And you know why? I don't support Zionism. Zionism is nowhere to be found in the Holy Writ. Nowhere to be found. I don't call it Bible. Remember a couple weeks ago? The term, how did we get the term the Bible? Ask John Chrysostom, listen, representing the Roman Catholic system, the Vatican, and the main god, goddess, of Greece, we're talking about going back 2,000 years, from the city of Byblos, B-Y-B-L-O-S, their main god was Ta Biblia, or La Biblia, a transgendered god. That's what the Bible means. So we got to remove the term the Bible and call God's word the holy scriptures of the mind of Christ. This is a global revolution. Zionism is not of God. It is a Rothschild political ploy beginning with an atheist by the name of Theodore Hertz in the 18, late 1800s created the World Zionist Congress. Their first Congress was in Basel, Switzerland. There's that term Basel. They replaced the Holy Torah, 
the man of God with a document of devils called the Talmud that supports pedophilia, that a grown man can marry a three-year-old little girl. A grown woman can marry a three-year-old little boy. Don't call me an anti-Semite. It's in the Talmud. Both the Babylonian Talmud and the Jerusalem Talmud, where they disrespect the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yeshua of the Christ, by saying that Christ is boiling in a cauldron of semen. Lord, forgive me for saying, but I have to expose the truth. We are the original Jews. I got to be careful. I don't want us to get a strike or be taken down. Zionism started in the late 1800s. No fear. Thank you, Pastor Sam. Theodore Hertz. Theodore Hertz, who was an atheist, had said that God gave the land of Israel to the Israelis. But why would he say that? And yet at the same time, Theodore Hertz was an atheist. Do you guys remember the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem? Husini, remember that name, the Grand Mufti? Who sent him to see to see Adolf Hitler? Uh, li listen, on and not not to get away from your original question, uh, Pastor, concerning why is the term the God of Israel in the Word? Benjamin Netanyahu, through his mouth on YouTube, had said that the Grand Mufti was a devil in which he was who was put into Islamic power as the Grand Mufti over Jerusalem for Islamic law and the Grand Mufti over Palestine for Islamic law. The Grand Mufti Husseini, Netanyahu said that Husseini went to Berlin, Germany in 1941 had a meeting with this devil who's burning in hell where he should be, Adolf Hitler. And, he, and it was Netanyahu who said, on a, during the speech on YouTube, that the Grand Mufti Husseini had created the final solution concerning the J question. He gave the ideal for the liquidation of six million precious and beautiful souls. Who said that? Netanyahu said that. But the part, there's an, I feel the anointed, the part, Pastor Sam, that Netanyahu did not say, who put this devil who seen he to be the Grand Mufti over Jerusalem and over Palestine, and who put him in charge of the Caliphate Islamic law? A Kazarian British attorney and politician, Herbert Lewis Samuel. Herbert Lewis Samuel a member of the World J Congress, the World Zionist Congress, put a devil in charge of Islamic Caliphate over Jerusalem and put him in charge of the Grand Islamic Council over Palestine, sent him to see Hitler in 1941. That's the part that Netanyahu won't say. You're, you're in the class right now, Pastor Gray. Any more questions? It's favor all over again. But Moses had no fear. I had this dream last night I want to share with you. I was walking in this den and up in this den, it was like an arena. There were snakes and pythons and cobras and scorpions and lizards. 
When I walked in, they began to fall over dead on the ground of the arena. And that's right, Pastor Mark. In Christ, it is neither Jew nor Greek. We're all one in Christ. Okay? And no, we're not, we're not getting lost in genealogy, but at the same time, Pastor Mark, we have to tell people who are the original Hebrews. It is important. No one wants to hear that. Yes, there's no Jew and Greek in, 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 uh, in Christ, but sorry about that. When someone asks me a question, who there are the original Hebrews, I'm going to tell you the truth. That's the part people don't want to hear. Because they would rather for you to be 50 cent, quarter, nickel, penny, ice tea, ice cube, ice tray, icicle, ice pop, six, nine, five, two, little bow wow, Lil Kim, Glorilla in garbage. That's what they want us to be, but they don't want us to know who we are. Ooh, thank you, Holy Spirit, for the teaching through the bishop. Next question. <laughs> Come on now. Woo! Thank you, Pastor Rick. Thank you, everyone, for joining the bishop tonight. No more questions. Thank you so much. Okay. Now, don't send us a bunch of emails. I, I wanted to ask you a question. You should have asked me during the class, okay? Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Listen, young black men and women, pull up your pants. Do me a favor. Write down the word sagging, S-A-G-G-I-N. Write it backwards from right to left because Hebrew is written from right to left. You get the name of a demonic psyop of N-I-G-G-A-S. That's the problem with our people. It's a demonic psyop. If you add a letter G at the end of sagging, S-A-G-G-I-N-G, and write that backwards because Hebrew is written from right to left, you get the word G, then N-I-G-G-A-S. Listen, G unit, it's a demonic psyop. See, no one wants to hear the truth. Thank you, everyone, for being with us here tonight. You see that, Pastor Charity? Oh, my God. Who built the pyramids? Black Egyptians. Black Egypt. Listen. See, Hollywood wants to portray at the Egyptian, Egyptians as white or Arab looking. Stop. They were black. All the pharaohs were black. Okay? That's the land of Ham. I know people don't want, they don't want to hear the, you see, this is the reason why. Here at Global Spiritual Revolution Media Group, Los Angeles, New York, we are the greatest apostolic revolutionary movement since Pentecost because no one is teaching this, not on this level. Every church, especially, I hate to call it black, uh, and not church, yeah, churches, or they're Circe's, but Black ministers, I hate to call it that. You got that picture of that white Yeshua who Cesare Borgia, take it down and throw it out. Oh, what a whole, no, see, you've been brainwashed. The picture that goes like this with long hair, painting from the chest up, a brown beige back. That's not Christ of the Gospels. That's Cesare Borgia the homosexual lover of his cousin, Michelangelo, and his second cousin, Leonardo da Vinci. And the Da Vinci Code, the Last Supper painting. We did the program. Thank you, Pastor Derek. Who's portraying Christ sitting in the middle in Da Vinci's Last Supper? It's not Christ. It's actually a female by the name of Julia Farnese. Julia with the G. See, people don't want to hear the truth. On the right of Julia Farnese, 
is not the apostle John leaning away. That's the daughter of Julia Farnese, Laura Farnese. Okay? Do you understand? Who's revealing these iconic paintings? Putin in the Russian government. Putin said that we've been lied to for the past 2,000 years. Okay? The truth needs to be prevailed, Pastor Mark. People, they feel, I don't care. See, I, I'm not here to placate people's feelings. And I know, I know that's not what you're doing, Pastor Mark. My job is to call those things which be not as though they were. The Apostle John, so-called John, on the picture of the Last Supper, created by Leonardo da Vinci, the homosexual lover of Cesare Borgia, is Laura Farnese, the daughter of both Pope Alexander VI and the side piece of Pope Alexander VI, Julia Farnese, we've been lied to. And all the so-called apostles in the Last Supper painting, those were killers and rapers and robbers let out through the legal edict of Pope Alexander VI out of the Roman prison industrial complex, we've been lied to. Yes, the Last Supper took place in the Gospels, but not like that, that da Vinci revealed. You've been lied to. Do you understand? And in my conclusion, the Shroud of Turin that's not the face of Christ. That's Cesare Borgia, who is also portrayed as Salvador Monday, M-U-N-D-I, having a 6-6 code on his right hand and a occultic witchcraft ball in a, it's all demonic. The Last Supper painting took place inside of a homosexual lesbian and child pedophilia brothel called the Marie, okay, Del Grazie. The Maria Del Grazie, that Christ has nothing to do with it. So we've been lied to, okay? All right, thank you so much. I'm comfortable around you, Bishop. You see, listen, this truth is not comfortable to a lot of people. Because all you used to is a white Jesus. Now people say, well, it makes the difference. Well, see, if that's the case, then why did the Vatican felt the need to change it? All right, paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group, okay? Paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group, okay? Please, everyone, put up. Um, the PayPal link, all of the moderators, paypal.me for slash GSR. I mean, people want to come in and try to interrupt because they feel uncomfortable. Too bad. The death of OJ Simpson. I I got the news, I think, is it early this morning or last night? Pastor Dave, I, I, was it this morning or last night? I didn't know he had prostate cancer. I didn't know he had prostate cancer. OK, and I've got a I got to be careful, a phone call meeting with my contacts in the government. They're going to tell me how he really died. OK. PayPal.me for slash GSR major. Was this teacher? Was it mind blowing to you? Was it mind blowing? Put up those faces if this was mind blowing to you. I got to continue to use wisdom. Thank you, Pastor Sam. PayPal.me for slash GSRR Media Group. And I will also put that up myself. PayPal.me for slash GSRR Media Group. PayPal.me for slash GSRR Media Group. There it goes. When you give unto the Lord, he'll give you more to give. Good measure, press down, shaking together. Running, on a, running over shall men give unto your bosom. God will give you double for your triple, triple for your pain. PayPal dot four slash g s r r media group thank you pastors and we do not say the c word nor the v word anyone that says the c or the v word block them okay we don't want to give the deep state any bullets to use against us okay Woo! listen listen 
Um, got a good laugh in here. Okay, God bless you, sir. PayPal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. PayPal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. Take this, I don't like to call it mouse or rat or mice. Take this or your finger. If you have a desktop, laptop, uh, Apple, tablet, Chrome tablet, you have an iPhone or an Android or an Apple Watch, just click on the PayPal link. You receive a world-class education tonight, okay? Please click on paypal.me um, forward slash GSRR Media Group. Paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. After you click on the PayPal link, everyone, please concentrate. Everyone, concentrate. Click on the PayPal link. And after you click on the PayPal link, after you click on the PayPal link, then click send. Plant the Lord's tithe, the tithing of the Christ. Your gross is 3000 You get paid with it once a week and once every two weeks, once every three weeks, once a month. The gross of your time. Let's say uh, your gross is 5000 the tithe of Christ is 500. Your gross is 4,000. The tithe of Christ is 400. Your gross is 3,000. The tithe of Christ is 300. Okay. Please plant the Lord's tithe on paypal.me for slash GSRR media equipment. I will put it up again. And all the moderators, please put up the PayPal link right now. PayPal.me for slash GSRR media group. PayPal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. And after you click on the PayPal link, click send. Don't click request, click send. Plant the Lord's tithe. And in the very same transaction, plant $200 or more. Okay. You should be like popcorn, $200, $300, $400, $500. Three of you give a thousand. You might be a millionaire or close to it. And what? Our nation and the world went through between what 2020 and 2023 did not put a dent in your finances. I thank God we have students from all walks of life. Also, we got students, men, uh, brothers in the NBA, the NHL. We got three brothers in the NHL, a few brothers uh, in Major League Baseball. We got some brothers uh, and sisters here in Hollywood, actors and actresses on the television level. The cinematic level, we have students as high as those members of the Board of Governors for the Academy Awards. That's all I'm going to say. This is a global movement. They give $1,000 each week because they can't afford it. But three of you give 1000 The rest of you give your best. I thank God for all of you guys. Pastor Ellis Ewing, I thank God for him. Pastor Sam, Pastor Colleen. Pastor Jody Bird, uh, Apostle Ty Kemp, Apostle Colada Kemp, giving faithfully each and every week. I thank God for Pastor Chris Harris, one of our powerful and anointed great men of God, great pastors here uh, in the Long Beach area who faithfully gives, okay? PayPal.me for slash GSRR Media Group, okay? Uh, PayPal.me for slash GSRR Media Group, okay? Uh, thank you, guys. Was this mind-blowing to you tonight? Truth is uncomfortable for a lot of people. And they want to come in here, well, all, it, it makes the difference. We're all Greek and Jewish. It, it doesn't, it, okay, it doesn't make a difference. But the question from the brother earlier, why does the phrase God of Israel, so why is that in the word? Okay? So don't get uncomfortable. Don't get sensitive because of the truth. Okay? No, it's about it's not about black and white, but it's about the authenticity of the truth. God bless every one of you guys, okay? God bless you. God bless you. PayPal, and I'm going to keep saying it, paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. PayPal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. You always got these devils coming in here acting cute. You're blocked. You're gone. PayPal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. You see... We run a very tight apostolic ship here, okay? Also, plant $200 or more. Thank you so much. And you may have to go through this a few more times because this is this is heavy. This is some heavy, heavy uh, meat. And this meat is not for everyone, 
okay? You are so very blessed, uh, ladies and gentlemen. You're so very, you're so very honored you're, by God. You're so favored by Christ because he has specifically chosen you to be a part of the most powerful movement on this earth called Global Spiritual Revolution Media Group, Los Angeles, New York. And we are dissecting truth like none other with the foundation being Christ. Thank you so much. And thank you so much. And keep the bishop in your prayers, okay? Great to see you, see you Pastor Christie. Also, please, we have a cash app link. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. Our cash app link is dollar sign, then Global Revolution 1, okay? Dollar sign, then Global Revolution in the number one. Now, the words Global Revolution must be in all upper cap, capitalized letters. Dollar sign, then Global Revolution 1. Uh, please plant the Lord's tithe and in the same transaction, plant $200 or more. Also, ladies and gentlemen, um, you can send your checks or your money orders in care of Bishop Larry Gators, okay? Oh, Larry Gators, um, P.O. Box 161, Lomita, California, 90717, okay? In care of Bishop Larry Gators or Larry Gators, P.O. Box 161, Lomita, California, 90717. Thank you, Pastor Colleen. It's right beside Pastor Colleen's name. Just follow my fingers right beside Pastor Colleen's name. Uh, in care of uh, Bishop Larry Gators or Larry Gators, P.O. Box 161, Lomita, California, 90717. When you're sending, especially your money orders, always use a post office money order, okay? Um, the earthquake, oh my God. It mean, What a great question, Pastor Charity. Bishop, what message did the earthquake in New York last week mean for us? Uh, as it's the fulfillment of prophecy, Pastor Charity, earthquakes in diverse places. And when is the last time that New York City had, a, had an earthquake in connection uh, with CERN, in connection Unto the solar eclipse. All of it is in alignment to scriptures for the film fulfillment for the coming of the Lord. So you had uh, CERN breaking down for a second large hadron collider. You have China breaking down, uh, breaking ground for it, the largest, what they said, the Chinese government said, for the largest. Um, Hadron Collider in history. and But China also has a trillion dollar artificial sun. Yes. China has a seven, has a one trillion dollar uh, artificial sun. So also on the same day of the solar eclipse, NASA shot rockets into the air, into space. Why? I'm telling you, there are wars in heaven, in the heavens right now. Thank you, Pastor Sam. Every time there's a blood moon, it means Lucifer is bleeding, but it also means God is excommunicating angels out of the heavens. This didn't stop, okay, in Genesis 6, Enoch 6, Jude 6, 6, 6, 6. God is still casting out disobedient angels out of the heavens every time there's a blood moon. And we've had 18,000 solar eclipse, okay, for the past 6,000 years since Genesis 3 and 6. It means there is a hidden war that we don't see, but only apostolics can see. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you, every one of you, okay? We love you guys. We honor you guys. Uh, all you guys, Pastor Rick, all of you, please plant right now. Plant the Lord's tithe and plant $200 or more, okay? God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And we will see you guys on Tuesday. And let me ask you guys a question. Do you guys like Monday classes better than Tuesday? Um, would you rather go like Mondays and Thursdays? Or should we stay with Tuesdays and Thursdays? Let me know, okay? Oh, oh, there you go, Pastor Daryl Turner. Oh, Lord. 
Mondays and Thursdays or Tuesdays and Thursdays. No pastor calling, so we should stick to Tuesdays and Thursdays. All right, let me know, okay? No, no Mondays and Thursdays. Okay, so we'll, we will stick to um, Tuesdays and Thursdays. But Pastor Darrell Turner, great, uh, Darrell Turner, great question. The term Horus means hour. So the timeology of that the the entire creation is under now, um, the time of Horus, which means hour, and Horus had four sons, representing half hour, okay? Hour, half hour, minute, and second. Those words, hour, half hour, minute, second, are names of demons in Egyptian demonology, okay? Through the teaching of Egyptology. So when we say Horus, like horoscope, or the coping of Horus is demonic. No apostolic should be stuck in horoscope. That's witchcraft. PayPal.me for a slash GSRR meter. Mondays is too long to wait. You're right. You know what, Pastor P? You are right. I felt it was a long time between Monday and Thursday. So we're going to stick to Tuesday and Thursday. Okay. Thank you so much, Pastor B. That's so true because it felt like it was too long between Monday and Thursday, okay? PayPal.me for slash GSR Mina Group. So there's er that earthquake in New York, um, Pastor Charity, there's another one coming, I'm telling you. And But the saints, the apostolic body with the blood of Christ <coughs> protecting you, your, um, your uh, doorpost, God is protecting you, okay? Thank you, Pastor Rick, every Tuesday and Thursday, all right? <clears throat> Let's pray for our president, President Donald J. Trump, okay? Uh, he's going to win the presidency. They're trying to stop him, okay? But no weapon that's formed against the president. Thank you, Pastor Chris Black, uh, Pastor Chris Black, all the way from Global Spiritual Revolution Media Group, Las Vegas. I got to get back to Las Vegas. Haven't been back there since um, the Super Bowl. Mr. Nanny Pot. <laughs> Netty, 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 Net, Yahoo, you're done. Okay, you're done. So let's pray for our president, President Donald J. Trump. Uh, I've never seen a man under attack like that. Okay, as far as um, a president, I've never seen anyone under that. And did you hear about uh, Pastor Rick? Uh, the GOP, the Republican Party, has subpoenaed. Uh, what you're talking about, Willis, okay? And Fanny Willis, good, because she lied, okay? She lied, okay? Nettie Paul. <laughs> <coughs> you got to tell me what that means, Pastor. Nettie Paul, okay? See, Netanyahu is not what people think. He's not, Pastor Rick. But we know what you're doing, Nettie Yahoo, Nettie Paul. We know what you're doing, but it won't work. Thank you, everyone, for being with the bishop tonight. My cough is getting, you know, God is removing the phlegm from my throat. Um, and so my doctors want me to slow down. You know, I feel great. I'm not tired, you know. Um, thank you so much. Uh, but the no high law, we're going to get into that Tuesday. Uh, the, the no high laws, or the legal system of the no high laws. We'll get into that Tuesday. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Sippy, Pastor Deborah Watts. Please, everyone, plant the best, okay? Don't hit and miss. Don't give one week and then you don't give nothing for the next month. Don't do that, okay? Please plant the Lord's time right now and plant $200 or more. Someone give 1000 give a 800 You should be like popcorn, 200 300 800 1000 right there. Follow my finger right there. PayPal.me forward slash GSRR meter group. Pray for the bishop. Pray for the bishop. Michigan Bridge, I'm telling you, Pastor Chris Black, you know, the bridge in Baltimore, that was distraction. That's all it was. It was distraction. That's all it was. Distraction. Okay. And also, guys, when you're giving, don't tell me you got to pray about it. Stop. That's the devil talking to you. Okay. 
plant the Lord's tithe. God didn't say, well, you pray about it. No, there's no scripture in the word was talking about you got to pray about it, okay? That's spiritual laziness, okay? Plant the Lord's tithe and plant $200 or more, okay? Did you feel that earthquake, Pastor Charity? Uh, oh, my God. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, God is allowing the plagues to take place to force America, to force our nation back to him, okay? God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Pray for me. Um, got a lot of events I have to cover. No, I'm not going to tell you what they are. I got to use wisdom. Right beside Pastor Charity's name, paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group, paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. Take this or your finger, follow my finger, right there, right beside Pastor Charity's name, right there, right there, right there, right beside Pastor Charity's name. Click on paypal.me for slash GSRR Media Group. Paypal.me for slash GSRR Media Group. Did you guys see our studio? We got two studios. We have a large studio. Um, my staff put up those, those photos on Instagram, a large studio, and also we have a smaller studio for offices, right, uh, and for smaller TV shows. So what God is doing, he has opened massive doors for us, Pastor Sam, uh, through the Global Movement Studios, LLC, for the creation, the design, and the distribution of Christ-centered apostolic films, okay? We thank God for every one of you for apostolic, Christ-centered films. We love every one of you. We honor every one of you guys, okay? Thank you so much. Listen, Cassandra, you're full of demons. See, this is you don't come in here with your garbage. You're gone, okay? You see, demons are agitated, and they're mad, they're upset because I'm exposing these demons, and I'm exposing the truth, okay? Thank you so much, and I got to use wisdom. I was told to do that, Pastor Rick and Pastor Sam, regarding OJ. And I can tell you this, it wasn't prostate cancer, and that's all I'm going to say. Thank you, everyone, for being with the bishop tonight. Agitated demons, you see that? These witches, these warlocks, these Jezebels, you're exposed, you're blocked, you're gone in Christ's holy name. Thank you. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Have a wonderful weekend. And I got some um, organic broth, okay? And um, I'm going to rest. Thank you, Pastor Sam. You may have to go through this again. Share this lecture. Share these teachings on Facebook, Instagram, X, Twitter, TikTok. We don't know. We don't know how long TikTok is going to remain up, but you have my permission. Do not alter the teaching, or you'll be blocked. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Deborah Watson. All you guys. Thank you so much. Ain't no. Je there's no Jezebels coming in here with your garbage. You're gone. Okay. No warlocks. Coming in here with your garbage, you're gone, okay? Listen, we don't put up with your garbage. Thank you. I am an apostolic assassin. I am a Pentecostal mercenary. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys on Tuesday, okay? Oh, thank you so thank you so much, Pastor Deborah. Uh, Deborah, I love that name, Deborah. That's a... That's a a name in the scriptures of the Queen Deborah. Thank you, Pastor Watts. All you guys. Filthy demons. That's all they are, Pastor Rick. Filthy, stinking demons, okay? But you're not coming here to disrespect God, and you're not coming here to disrespect me or the students. You're God. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys on uh, Tuesday, okay? See you guys on Tuesday. And tomorrow, I have to be on uh, two more uh, one podcast and then another radio show on tomorrow. Uh, a podcast I have to be on out of Rome, Italy. Okay, connected to the Christ Embassy organization, and then I'll be on a radio show tomorrow evening at six out of Nassau in the Bahamas. So listen, every other day 
the bishop who's in great demand. Every other day I'm on some radio show or podcast somewhere around the world. And technically I'm book, you know, two years in advance until the fall of 2026. Thank you. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Woo! I'm telling you, thank you so much. Um, the time zone, we'll put that up on tonight. And we'll put it up on tonight, okay, as far as the time zone. Praise God. And when you guys can listen to the interview. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Have a great weekend. And that is it. After two hours, 55 minutes and 22 seconds of module two, volume two, the end of days, the path of totality in our thank you. Thank you guys for being with the bishop tonight and continue to send me those videos. Please continue to send me those videos, those links. Thank God for Pastor um, Sam, Pastor Rick. Uh, Pastor Rita, all you guys, uh, Pastor Deborah, continue to send me those links. Please continue to do that, okay? Um, on Facebook, Twitter, X, Instagram, continue to do Because you're feeding my soul and now you guys are preparing me to teach each and every global masterclass. Thank you so much for, for the best. It's yet to be the last of life for which the first was made. We'll see you guys on Tuesday. Have a great weekend. Love every one of you. Divine protection for you, Bishop. Thank you, Pastor Joyce. Love you, Pastor Joyce, all you guys. I'm in love with you. Don't think it's strange when the Bishop says he's in love with you. It means I love you as Christ loves every one of you. Thank you so much, okay? And we'll get into that on Tuesday. All these bridge collapsings, all these bridge that are collapsing, it's not by accident. It's the law of distraction to keep you over here so that Biden and his cronies can hide something over here. God bless you. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Love you in Christ. Plant the Lord's time and plant $200 or more. I love you. Pray for me in Christ's holy name. Okay. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Thank you, Pastor uh, Ty and Pastor Carlotta. Uh, you, and, and the new students, you can also join um, the students who are just new today. Go to globalspiritualmovement.org, globalspiritualmovement.org. And uh, for a one-time fee of $50, okay? And then pretty soon we're going to, we're going to be starting to teach out of uh, our um, website, uh, it's a class called the mind of God. So I won't be constrained, okay, of saying certain words. I can just say it. Globalspiritualmovement.org, globalspiritualmovement.org. God bless you. And uh, check out um, the pillars and strategies, the commercials. I'm going to check that out tonight. Pastor Ty and Pastor Carlotta, thank you so much. We love you guys. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Have a wonderful weekend. I love you. And keep the bishop in your prayers. Hold me up in your prayers. I'm on the front line. I would never capitulate. I would never bend over. Okay. I would never be butt broken. I would never ever wear a dress because I'm an apostolic assassin. I am a Pentecostal mercenary. Thank you. Good night from Los Angeles. I'll see you guys on next Tuesday. Great to see you, love, from Australia. God bless you. Um, oh, my God. God bless you, Pastor Renato. Thank you for all the way from Australia. And we got those from, we got students. We got a little over 300 million students registered on our website from all over the world. Why? This is a global revolutionary movement. God bless you. And I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Have a great weekend. Praise God. And keep me in your prayers. Good night from Los Angeles. Remember, the bishop loves every one of you. Good night.